Okay, welcome back folks. I got something a little bit goofy today. I wanna to shoot some of these Sabos that allow you to shoot 22 bullets, 224 diameter bullets in your 30 caliber firearm. These come from the E. Arthur Brown Company at ebco.net. I've been asked about these a lot over the years. I see them as a bit of a gimmick. I've just never taken them seriously because whenever you go out looking for information about them, pretty much all you see are people saying how terrible they shoot. Like four or five inch groups at 100 yards seems to be success. And some people can't get them to hit a 10 foot target at 25 feet, it seems like. So we're gonna give them a shot. Remington used to make factory ammo with this sort of thing. They called the accelerator. They made them for 30-06, 308, and 3030. And I guess the thought was that it, you know, take your deer rifle and turn it into a varmint rifle when you need one. I think the smarter move is to just buy a 22250 or a 223 or whatever. But the product exists, so we're going to give it a shot. I bought their starter kit. It was 30, 35 bucks. It comes with this little plastic shell holder that snaps into your press, and it's got this plastic bullet seeder that's for inserting the bullets into the Sabo. The first one I tried here, just you know, seeing what it was like, the bullet went down in there no problem. But we're going to try out the die. Maybe the, the one I did by hand isn't completely seated all the way down. Maybe. I don't know. Now, the documentation that comes with the Sabos says to use 50 to 60 grain bullets and says that, you know, 1 in 10 to 1 in 12 twist barrels like you'll find in most 30 caliber stuff is best suited to that weight range. So we're going to stick with 55 grainers today, at least at, at first. Another thing they say is important is to have a clean bore. Clean out all the copper, all the lead fouling out of your barrel, and that's supposed to be important to get accuracy. So I've had my barrel soaking all morning. I'm going to try and have it as clean as I can. And by the way, we're going to shoot these in 300 Winchester Magnum because if we're going to do something goofy, we might as well crank these velocities up as high as we can get and have some fun. They do provide some load data. I'll tell you what, let me bring you up close. We'll have a look. All right, here's what you get. Like I mentioned, they, they tell you to make sure to shoot with a clean bore. They say never to shoot them in a barrel with a muzzle brake or a suppressor or anything like that. So we're just going to be shooting a naked barrel today with our 300 Winchester Magnum. Use 50 to 60 grain bullets. And for load data, they tell you check below to see if the cartridge you want to load with Sabos is listed in our computer generated loading reference slash data. If it is, use that data. Well, let me show you what is included. We've got 308 Winchester, we've got 30-06, 30 Carbine, 30 Herit, 3030, 3040 Craig, 300 Savage, 300 Weatherby Magnum, 300 H&H Magnum, 308 Norma Magnum, and lastly, the 300 Winchester Magnum. This is a little bit confusing to read, but once you go down here a little bit lower, they show you a class of powders. So IMR 3031, Reloader 11, H335, Accurate 2230, S3032, my brain's cramping a little bit. Not sure what that is, Winchester 748 and Norma 201. And then down here in uh, alternate powder type, BLC2, H322, Reloader 12, Accurate 2460, and Norma 203. And see, it gives you like 70.3 grains for this group of powders and 73.9 grains for this group of powders and tells us to expect 4,400 feet per second and that's 42,400 PSI and it tells you to back that off 10%. They also give you a chart for like our primary powder types, which we're gonna shoot IMR 3031 and H335. But here it shows you a load density and a charge weight, velocity and pressure. So what I wanna try is, let's start out with 65.0 grains of 3031 and H335, and we'll shoot 70.0. So kinda in this range, 70, going to be getting pretty close to our calculated maximum here. I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes. This was printed out in 1993, so 25 years ago. You'd think if many people had blown up guns with this, they would have updated it by now. So hopefully it's safe. I don't know. We'll just see what happens, see what the velocities look like, and go from there. So for your cartridge, powders might be different or, you know, whatever. So the charts will definitely be different. Let's jump over to 308 Winchester as an example and see what our main and alternate powder list is. IMR 4198, Reloader 7, S4197, and it doesn't show any alternate powder selections for 308. So these are a little bit faster than the ones we're shooting, which makes sense, a whole lot less case capacity. And it looks like they top out right about 4,000 feet per second, or uh, yeah, 4,000 feet per second. 
or up here it shows 3,800 feet per second. Whatever, hope, hopefully that gives you an idea of how you start with powders. And they give you a second option, and that is to check the loading manuals to find a uh, 224 caliber cartridge that has more or less the same case capacity. And they give the example that if you're shooting a 300 bench rest magnum, then 22250 is about the same. So you can use 22250 data with 55 grains. And actually, I was checking earlier, the Sabo weighs about five, so the total is about 60 grains. So you can look up 60 grain load data for a cartridge with a similar case capacity. Now, one problem I ran into, I was originally gonna use these 55 grain Nosler Varmageddon's, and I pulled out the Sabo seating die just to see, and both ends of this thing, it's got one end with a little hole and the other end with a bigger hole, and the plastic tip, the ballistic tip on this Nosler bullet or polymer tip, I should say, doesn't work on either end. It, it goes down and hits the flat part. So I would need to drill it out a little bit deeper to make room for the tip to use either of these because it would just be extremely sloppy. I pulled out several other bullets and found similar problems, but I found one that I think is gonna work. These are the Varmint Nightmare bullets from Mid-South Shooter Supply. These are their 55 grain Varmint Nightmares. And these guys are still bad but not quite as bad. So I think this is probably gonna be the best way to go. But like I mentioned, let me grab one of the Sabos here. From what I can tell, they just slide right down in and then you can press them with your fingers. But I guess getting that depth consistent might be a problem. Let's look at the other one. One nice thing about this bullet is it does have a cantaloupe so we can kind of gauge our Sabo seating depth by the cantaloupe. Those look pretty close, don't they? Yeah, they do. So you might save a few bucks and just skip the, the plastic seating die, or if it gives us any problems, we'll just pitch it in the trash and put them in by hand. Now, one more uh, powder I wanna try is Hodgson Trail Boss. I got to thinking after reading so much about the crappy accuracy, I was wondering if a really fast powder, you know, like a reduced load with a fast powder might at least produce some usable accuracy. And the good thing about Trail Boss, Hodgson has a little sheet. You can make your own reduced load that's safe with Trail Boss with just about anything. All you do is you take your bullet and you see how far it's gonna seat down. And then you fill the case full of Trail Boss until you run out of space, until you're like right at 100% case fill. And that's your max charge. And then you back it down off of that a little bit for a starting. Let me, I should probably pull up that so I'm not giving out bad, bad info. They actually say to take 70% of that and call that your starting load. So from 70 to 100% case fill with Trail Boss is safe in just about anything. So we're gonna try a big old case full of Trail Boss and see if maybe it gives better accuracy than the other powders. Now the other problem, well for brass, I've got 40 pieces of brand new Norma brass that I need to fire form. And that's what I'm hoping to accomplish as I'm you know, messing around with these. Hopefully I don't end up screwing it up, messing around with goofy stuff. And I think we're going, much like lead bullets, we're gonna run into the fact that these are hard to get started. Like I've sized this brass, got it ready to go, put a little chamfer on the case mouth with a, with a pointy VLD chamfering tool, but it's still, they're gonna go in a little goofy. We're gonna end up scraping plastic and it's gonna be bad. So what they recommend is this is a Lee Universal case expanding die. And let me pull this guy apart for you. It's got two pieces inside that sit back to back like this, and it's just two little pointy expanders. So the big one's usually for you know larger pistol stuff or bigger uh, caliber stuff, but this pointy little fella works fine up to 30 caliber. So I wanna use this to flare that case mouth just a little bit. Not so much that I screw up my very expensive, very brand new brass, but just enough to get these bullets starting properly. So if you're loading these, having troubles, this is what you need. Uh, the E. Arthur Brown Company sells these on their website right in the same section with these Sabos. And here in just a couple minutes, we'll go through setup on this die. But that's all it is, the pointy little thing down in there that you put your case mouth over. All right, while we're here, let's figure out our max charge of Trail Boss. If you're not familiar with Trail Boss, I'll show you some here in just a second. But I've got a gigantic Lee scoop. We're just gonna dump a bunch into the funnel until it looks like we got about a full case. All right, so there it is filled up to the rim. I'm just gonna tap a little bit out and I've got it to where the powder level is sitting just a little bit below the neck shoulder junction, which let's double check what our Sabo is gonna look like. I assume we, we seat them down to 
the end of the uh, you know the bearing surface where the little collet looking fingers sit so that's about perfect so this is our max charge and it's very important never to compress trail boss i don't know why that is but i just know hodgton warns that not sure if it just starts acting weird or if it's actually a danger but i don't want to find out 28.2 grains so this stuff is extremely fluffy takes up a massive amount of case capacity with these donut shapes which is why we're only able to fit 28 grains into a big old 300 Winchester Magnum case. I tell you what, let's shoot 27.0. Dip some out of here until we get to 27.0. Yep, there it is. And then I'll put it back in the case and we'll see what that case fill looks like. Yep, even without a bunch of tapping and settling, it's already nicely down there. Yep, just a little bit above the case body and shoulder junction there. Just a little bit. That ought to work just fine. All right, let's jump over to the press. We'll try out this plastic cedar thingy. We'll get our flaring die set. We'll get our bullet seating die set. So like I mentioned, we're gonna use the smaller side. So this is the big side and you see, it goes down and bottoms out and then you've got a little bit of side to side movement. So we're definitely bottoming out the tip, but this side, it goes down. Still doesn't feel great, but at least we don't have any side to side movement. I read a lot of like the reviews on their website get that guy out of the way that said the threads on these plastic dies were a little bit gnarly oh smooth as silk here for me ah, i spoke too soon some folks were saying if you run a lock ring down at first it helps out yeah this guy has hit a bit of a rough spot still getting it to move but it's putting up a pretty good fight here and there's really nothing to grab a hold of it with like any flats or anything I'll tell you what let's put the plastic shell holder in here let's get rid of my regular shell holder and put this guy in which eh, yeah it went in but that was a little tough as well I'm not sure how far down we're going to need to go with this dude I'm going to take one of the bullets I've already seated by hand it just sits in a little recess on the shell holder Let's bring that up. Yep, it's already making lots of contact, so we're already a little bit too far. If I can get this damn thing out of here now. <laughs> oh, man. Thought I had a big pair of channel locks up here, but I don't. All I got is these, like, gigantic uh, needle nose jobs. Eh, whatever. There we go. At least it's moving. Yeah, and that honestly didn't booger up the threads too bad. It definitely boogered them up, but not too bad. All right, so now I've raised it up enough to where we can hopefully bring the ram all the way up. There we go. And bring the die down to the bullet, which is the way we probably should have done it in the first place. There we go. I can feel a little bit of resistance now. They provide exactly zero directions on this part of the process, so that seems hard enough right there. Like you can see the turt on the press, you know, tilting up a little bit, definitely getting all of the slack out of the press. That's more than enough pressure on these guys. And holy moly, that went much deeper than the ones I thought I had seated all the way down by hand. Let me do the next one here. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah. Let's get an up close look at these guys. Okay, here are the two I seated with the die. And these are three more that I just put in with all of the force I can by hand. I even put the, the flat base of the plastic against the bench and pushed as hard as I can. I, like, I don't know, without boogering up my exposed lead tip on these varmint nightmare bullets, I don't know how else I would do it by hand. So I'm glad I got that die. And I'm wondering if maybe this is why a lot of people get terrible accuracy. Maybe the bullets aren't seated down in there enough. I don't know. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and seat bullets in 40 or 50 of these things. And then we'll move on. All right, since I've got 30 pieces of brass, I went ahead and prepped 30 bullets. Next thing I wanna do is actually set up my seating die, like basically set it up before we flare any cases, which I need to pop out my plastic shell holder and put in the regular one, put a case in the die, raise it all the way up. Now, this is something I've been kind of debating. And like I mentioned, they don't give us any instructions on the actual loading procedure. I'm gonna use a 30 caliber seating die and it comes down and that's about how it contacts our bullet and Sabo combination. It'll be 
touching only the Sabo. And actually, I guess even with a 22 die, you'd have to find just the right seating stem if you wanted to make contact with the bullet and not the Sabo. I, I don't know, we're gonna see how this goes. With this, I'm using a Hornady seating die, one of their custom grade seating dies. And I think this is the standard seating stem. So I wanna crank this guy down until I feel it touch the case mouth. There it is right there. And I, I don't really wanna crimp or anything like that, but I want that crimping ring right at the case mouth because we're about to flare the cases and maybe having that crimp right there at the case mouth will help close that up. I don't really have something like a Leaf Factory crimp die for 300 Winchester Magnum to undo the flare we're about to do. So let's hope that getting the seating die crimp pretty close will have a similar sort of effect. All right, now go back that direction and set up our, our flaring die. Same deal, we'll put the case in here, raise it all the way up. And this actually has, you know, an adjustment right here. So let's back this guy out yeah, until I can see threads. I assume this die is probably going to just barely work for 300 Win Mag. Hopefully it will work. Uh, poopy. Maybe it won't. Yeah, now I remember. It's been a while since I've used this die and read the instructions. On a really long case, you can pull out the second flaring thingy, and that'll give it much more room to move. So now let's see if it works. Oh, yeah. And right about there, I can feel it touching. So let me tighten down the lock ring. All right, so let's drop the case and see, make sure it hasn't done anything. I wanna do this absolutely as little as I possibly can. So let's go, let's go a quarter of a turn and see what that does. No, that doesn't quite do it. There's like an eighth of a turn. Once you get close, like little adjustments on this die can make a big difference. All right, now we're starting to get somewhere. So I'm able to set the plastic on there, give it a couple wiggles, and it sits there. And that's like pretty much no visually detectable bell, you know? If you really crank this down, I mean, it'll make the end of your freaking case look like a trumpet. So I think that's enough. Let me try a, try a second one here. I'm not sure how close the tolerances are with these. Yeah, that one also sits down in there pretty decent. We'll go eh, like a sixteenth more, just for the heck of it. Just in case we run into one or two that are maybe a little bit larger than others. You know, speaking of the size of these things, I don't know if they're 308 or if maybe they're a little bit oversized to fit the, the bore. Well, I may, think I may have found a problem. So they're about 308 or 309 right here at the bottom. But this part here where the bullet has seated has kind of bulged. Maybe I want a little bit too much pressure when seating the bullets into the Sabo. Like down here, where the bullet's behind it, where you're looking at, uh, I've seen a lot of 311s and 312s. That was a 310, 311. Yeah, so a little bit bigger. If we start getting like serious plastic scrapage whenever we're trying to seat these bullets and Sabos, might have to start all over, go back to our Sabo plastic seating die and back it off a little bit so as not to bulge that. I don't know, maybe that's normal. All right, I'm gonna flare the other 29 pieces of brass, then I'm gonna weigh some powder, and I'll see you guys back here once we're ready to try and seat these guys. All right, let me show you some case fill. First here is IMR 3031. Hmm, I need my little flashlight. All right, let's try this. Uh, yeah, 65 grains of 3031 is not bad, and here's 70 grains, which is a little bit better. So we're definitely in that realm of 75 to 100% case fill with 3031. However, H335, it's a long way down in there. I'm a little bit worried about how well this H335 is going to ignite. There we go. I am using Magnum primers, CCI 250s, so hopefully it'll be okay. The bigger charge, the 70 grain charge, might be getting closer to around maybe 70, 75% case fill, but a lot of empty space, and then there's our trail boss load, nice and full. So I haven't really picked out an overall length. Let's back out our adjustment stem, which you can't see, but yeah, just cranking that out a little bit. We'll start out with just trying to seat them until they look about right. Yeah, I got that in just a little bit crooked. We'll try and be careful and get the bullet sitting in there straight. You can see it's a little, little bit crooked. All right, that looks better. Let's see. Yeah, let's see what happens here. All right, all the way in. Feels like that touched it and seated it a little bit. Uh, <laughs> no, my case is kind of stuck in there a little bit. Yep, so it's currently just barely started. Crank that down a good bit. Try it again. Still not far enough. 
All right, 15 adjustments later, and I basically got the bottom, let me bring up another one there, there you go, the bottom of the collet type part of the Sabo, right at about the case mouth. Maybe I'll go just a little bit more, try and get that sitting flush with the case mouth. Yeah, there we go, maybe I went a little bit too far. That seems okay, let me seat. Tell you what, I'll seat these first three. Okay, got it pretty straight on there, and up it goes. Came out looking pretty close. First one here is 3.100. That'll be easy to remember. And the next one is 3.110. This is the one I seeded 1400 times setting the die. So it did kind of get the plastic a little bit. Yeah, I think the seating stem might've dug into the plastic a little bit. So that might account for the slightly longer overall length where this one seems to be in better shape. Let's try the third one here. See if it comes out right at 3.1. There it is. 3.103, fantastic. We'll call it 3.1. These exposed lead tip bullets are always gonna vary a little bit just depending on the shape of the bullet and any dings and damage on those. All right, so these first three, I wanna make sure they fit in my gun before I seat any more. And the problem is I'm soaking my barrel right now. So let me go finish cleaning my gun, then I'll bring it in here, we'll make sure they chamber, then I'll seat the rest of them, we'll be ready to shoot. All right, this is my Thompson Center Compass. Chambered in 300 Winchester Magnum. It is cleaner than it's been since the day I bought it, or since the day I shot the first round through it. Let's, uh, let's make sure these are going to chamber okay. Yep, no problem. Our overall length is still the same. Pop the other two in here. Yep, looking good. Now, I really should have done that with my, <laughs> with my safety set to like unload the unload setting or whatever. But in my case, it's no big deal. That way's a safe direction. I just end up with a hole in my roof. All right, first three are done. I'm gonna seat the rest of the bullets. I'll see you guys out on the range. All right, folks, let's get started. This is my Thompson Center Compass chambered in 300 Winchester Magnum. It's in a Boyd's Pro Varmint stock. It has been raining all weekend long. I got a little break in, the, in the, the rain. It's still windy as crap, but at least it's not raining. I brought a target all the way into 25 yards. I have no idea what the hell is gonna happen here. My target camera, I've got back here at the firing line because if these bullets disintegrate or something like that, I don't wanna take out my camera. So it's zoomed way in. The picture might look a little funky. I wanna start out with the trail boss loads. I think these are least likely to blow my face off. Let's get started. Let's shoot the first one, see what happens. Got the lab radar chronograph fired up. That's another problem. I don't know if it's gonna have problems as the Sabo separates from the bullet. Hopefully it's able to track the bullet instead of the Sabo. I don't know. Let's see what happens. All right, that looks like a clean round hole, just a little bit high on the target. Unfortunately, the chronograph did not trigger. That's a little bit of a surprise. All right, so I bumped up the trigger level. If it doesn't get it this time, I've got a microphone that goes on the lab radar for shooting with a uh, suppressor. I can go get that guy. So the brass looks fantastic. Nothing weird going on there. Let's try another one. Nope, didn't trigger. Crapola. And you can see that shot went nowhere near the other one. All right, let me go get the microphone for my lab radar. Okay, let's try with the microphone. It might be a distance thing. I might need to move the target back so the radar has time to pick it up or something. I don't know. There we go, 2839. It's kind of crazy for some trail boss. All right, let's move on to the big boy loads. 65 grains of 3031 is gonna be our first one. I gotta admit, I'm a little nervous on these. Seems like a whole lot of a really fast powder. Let's see what happens. All right, first shot, 3525, and my face is still intact. Let's see what the brass looks like. Yeah, looks just fine. All right, number two. 3561, and the last one. Yeah, that's better. That's about a 10 MOA group. Okay, so we didn't get a reading on that last velocity. That's okay. We'll go ahead and move on. I'll tell you what, let's shoot the light load of H335 next. So 65 grains of H335. See what this one does. I did move my target camera down towards the target because 
he was having a hard time focusing, got the bullet holes pasted up, so hopefully we can track this group. It says 3171. I don't know, my lab radar is kind of covering up the muzzle. This thing is blowing a fireball like you would not believe. It was doing it with 3031, and now with H335, it's even bigger. Yeah, and this one, I got some, some smoke and soot markings all the way down to the rim. So our velocity is a little bit lower. So believe it or not, H335 might not be hot enough here. We did get a hole through the paper. Let's shoot the other two. Second velocity is 3190, and that's good. Only, only 19 feet per second between those two. That tells me this H335 seems to be igniting. Good enough, hopefully. I can't believe the fireball. And there's the third shot. And there's the rain coming. Velocity there, 3149. Okay, let's move on to our big charge of IMR 3031. This is 70 grains. See what happens. 3877, the brass looks okay. 3896. And 3831. Well, I was certainly hoping we'd be over 4,000 feet per second just for the novelty of it. And we still got more we can load. That brass still looks fine. Maybe we can go up higher with 3031 just for the heck of it. Next is 70 grains of H335. And I forgot to arm the chronograph like an idiot. The brass still looks great. 3506. And the last shot. And we didn't get a chronograph reading. Hmm. I did notice there, those last couple shots with H335, I did seem to have a little bit of delayed ignition. Just the slightest hang fire. It may not come across on camera. All of the brass looks good. All right, let's get back to the bench, decide what to do next. All right, so I've been having a closer look at the brass. There's nothing to show you here. And I've got 15 more pieces that I want to load up and shoot. I've been trying to decide, like, do we chase it? Do we try another bullet, different seating depth? I don't know, whatever. Maybe we try shooting some where the bullet's not seated quite as deep into the Sabo. I, I'm having, I don't think I'm going to. These results are exactly what I read about other people's experience. So I, I think what we'll do, let's continue to use IMR 3031. That seemed to be igniting really good. We almost made it up to 3,900 feet per second. Let's just load up the rest with three more charge weights. So three five shot groups. We went up to 70 before. Let's do 71.5, 72.5, and 73.5. Let's try and sneak up on it and just see if we can get over 4,000 feet per second. Because looking at their load data, 73.6, was the first one that had a pressure warning. So we'll go right up to it. We'll keep it on the brass as we go, of course, and stop if we have to, but I think that's what we're gonna do. It's all the same, just gotta weigh out some charges and seat the bullets. Nothing to see here, so I'll just see you guys back out on the range. All right, I'll tell you what, let's see if these things will load out of the magazine. I reckon they will, but might as well check. Okay, have a look at that one. Yep, no problem at all. So we're starting with 71.5 grains of 3031. I got the bullet holes pasted up down there, but yeah, looking at them while I was pasting them, these bullets are just flying sideways. And the previous shots, except for that one that went really high, it's about an eight inch group at 25 yards. Not good. All right, let's see if we can hit 4,000 feet per second. First up, 71.5 grains. 39.35. Didn't get a reading on that one. That was another no reading. A few tweaks to the lab radar settings and we'd be fine, but whatever. Actually, I tell you what, there is one setting I could change that might help. It probably won't matter. All right, this is our last round of 71.5. Crap, only got one stinking reading. I'm gonna move the target back a little bit Maybe give it a little bit more time to track the bullet. Okay, so that turned into a complete and total disaster. I moved my target out to 40 yards and then forgot to hit record on my target camera. That's the sort of moron you're watching. This was that group at 40 yards. Yeah, right about eight inches, continued crap. Let's see if I can get you a look. Okay, let me see if I can get you a look at a couple bullet holes. 
Yeah, they're not supposed to be oval. They're supposed to be round. So these guys were tumbling. I didn't get any more velocity readings after that one in the first group that was 29.35. I don't know if it was as the velocity was increasing, the way the Sabo was releasing from the bullet. Maybe it was messing with the lab radar. I don't know. I don't really blame the lab radar. I, I thought about coming in to get my magneto speed, but same problem there. I don't know how fast that Sabo comes apart and I didn't want to screw up my magneto speed bayonet. So just, just a complete dumpster fire from beginning to end. The good news is that even with the highest charge, like th this brass looks perfect. There's nothing whatsoever to show you on any of the brass. So, you know, we were safe. The results are exactly what I expected after researching, right? The good news, I've got 60 of them left, right? Or 70 of them left. So if you've had luck with these things, tell me what I did wrong. I've got plenty, I can make a future video and maybe get them figured out. If I was bound and determined to get these running, I, I, I bet it's a, a matter of finding the perfect powder, which I'm honestly surprised that, you know, something like Trail Boss didn't work better than it did. Like, you know, the bullets were flying sideways with it as well. So trying, you know, some different powders would be one thing, and then maybe shooting some with different pressure when seeding that bullet into the Sabo. Maybe I was just putting too much pressure on them. I deformed the Sabo. So maybe getting to where it just barely puts it in place would be better. Or maybe not using 300 Winchester Magnum. Like maybe we could get these to work in something like 300 Blackout or even 308. I don't know. I honestly don't, just don't really care that much because we don't have any application for these or need for these. Just go buy a Thompson Center Compass for $200 and chamber it in 22250. You'll probably spend that much money trying to get these things shooting in your 30 caliber gun. And I can assure you, a Thompson Center Compass will shoot better than eight inch groups at 40 yards with any ammo you put in it. But hey, it was fun, you know, it was, it was a bit of a novelty. Like I mentioned, there's been a bunch of people ask me about these and somebody asked again a couple weeks ago and I thought, heck, why not? It was worth a shot. All right, that's it. The good news, if, if any of you guys are wondering why I'm wasting my time messing with stuff like this instead of doing the more important 300 Winchester Magnum videos I've got planned, well, I needed to, or I wanted to fire form this brass before our next video because I've got some other dies coming and some, some lots, of, lots of moving parts right now in the 300 Winchester Magnum series. The other thing, so I hope to be back on the range with 300 Winchester Magnum next weekend. This weekend was awful. It rained all day Saturday and most of today here on Sunday. Didn't get much range stuff finished, but I've got a couple other videos that I'm planning to make to fill the time. So, all right, I'm just rambling at this point. Appreciate you guys joining me. Like I said, if you've had luck with them, let me know how to get these Sabos working, and I'll see you guys next time.